Well, 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 here we are again, folks. Welcome back to the old car shop. And do we have a video for you today? Completely unexpectedly, Whatnot dropped a pretty big terms and service conditions, uh, change, renewal, whatever, shake up. And I'll be honest with you, it, it was not something that I saw coming. And so if uh, a lot of you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know, I started off streaming on multiple live stream platforms, be it like Instagram, Facebook, sort of wherever was around before Whatnot and Drip and the mainstream sort of selling live platforms were really big. I was doing all that and then Whatnot came around and I moved primarily to Whatnot very early on and I really had a lot of success there and that's where I built most of my business at. But in early February of this year, I made the choice and the decision to leave the platform for various reasons. You can refer back to my video here. I'll link it or something. Um, we detailed sort of what we were thinking in the moment. And now the video I made then was a little bit emotion driven because I was feeling uh, the feels at the time. Of course, I was a little bit, well, I was guarded with why. I left to a certain extent because I didn't feel comfortable calling out any individual streams by name that I hadn't already. There were certain things I had problems with on the app. And flash forward now, several months later, we have some of the larger, bigger breakers who have been banned from the platform for essentially scamming and railroading their customers for who knows how long and eroding the trust in what the, their customers had in their platform. And so it, what was best for them was to essentially get rid of those streamers. And so after getting rid of the streamers, not only did they take out some of the bad apples, but what they did is what, in my opinion, is they started to sort of um, cut away the infection. And so they're sort of dealing with the symptoms, not just the issues. Um, and they're treating the disease, it seems. And so we're going to go ahead and look at this together. I've pulled up the page uh, for the first time. I sort of skimmed through it just a little bit, but I wanted to kind of read this out with you guys together. Um, and we can maybe see what we think about all these new changes. So if you haven't already, like, subscribe, follow along, because this is going to be a fun video. And uh, we'll have more of these too. This is sort of impromptu though, so I apologize. There probably won't be a ton of editing with this, but let's see. Let's shrink it down here and... Uh all right, let's see what we got here. So, what not? New policy changes. Gambling. Purchase-based prizes. Break and mystery box policy. Today, 1536. That's, uh, I think that's what time it is now. But this dropped early morning. Um, I, I woke up first thing in the morning, and I think at like 7.30 or 8 o'clock, I checked my email, and that it was already there waiting for me. And then I checked the seller's Discord to see if that was also... Uh, there and lo and behold it was uh, it was blowing up in the whatnot sellers discord so we're gonna go over this together so the new terms of service for whatnot um, are as follows gambling facilitating or promoting gambling and selling gambling products is prohibited on whatnot some examples include paid entries to races wheels raffles roulette spins or other randomized results for a prize for example, selling a spot in an online race between ducks for a cash prize. This has already been banned from whatnot, so that's not really changed. Auctioning raffle tickets to win a video game console. Also, I believe it was already taken care of and banned before this, so that's I don't think that's much different. Lottery ticket sales, banned. Facilitating casino-style games such as poker, blackjack, or slots, banned. Purchased-based prizes. Now, this is going to be the new part of the terms and service that is really going to affect what I believe is going to be the, the majority of the pack-breaking um, sellers who are doing bounties, um, guess the energy games, whatever the carnival game that you would like to sort of input there. Um, those have all essentially been banned. So let's go over that specifically and what's detailed in this um, document so that there's not really any, it's, you don't rely on me, we can go with what, what not says, but then maybe we can discuss and elaborate what that means and what it means for, furthermore for, the, pro, for the, the platform and then for the sellers and then the buyers moving forward and um, sort of my opinions on this whole situation. So 
purchase base prizes. This is the part that I really is going to go in. It says, note this policy will go into effect on 8 28 2023. So that's the next Monday, essentially, the 28th of August. So, what not strictly prohibits sales containing purchase based prizes? where the purchase of an item qualifies the buyer for a chance to win an additional item or items, entry into a game, or other prizes. Examples include paid bounties or other sales where an item purchase also carries a chance at winning an additional item or prize. For example, offering an extra box of cards if someone hits a holographic card in the break you're conducting. Offering to purchase or trade for a product if hit within a specific show. Advertising to, pr to produce, uh, advertising to purchase or trade for a collectible product with contingencies on when or where the item will be purchased. Um, guess games or offering a prize for someone correctly guessing the contents of a concealed purchase, such as a particular trading card in a sealed product, i.e., guess the energy games. I added that. Um, those are banned. Any game where the item purchased as a has a chance of activating the receipt of a prize or entry into another game of chance. For example, offering a raffle ticket for a prize each time a buyer makes a purchase or giving buyers who spend a certain amount of money an entry into a duck race for an extra prize. Offering buyers an entry into a game of chance where they may win a prize based on the position of their bid. So none of that is allowed. Not anymore. As of this Monday. So that's sort of all new and that's going to be un uncharted territories. So the next part of this. Breaks. E.g. card breaks, box breaks. Sellers may only sell as many spots as there are cards available so that each buyer receives an item. This is normal. All buyers in a break must receive an item. All breaks must be open live. Fillers, which are raffles used to fill unsold break spots, are not permitted on whatnot. Now, once again, I think this is all sort of stuff that's already been there. So I'm just going to go through this just um, for the sake of doing it. Sellers, their family members, members of their household, or employees, this is an important one, are not permitted to enter breaks. They're facilitating on their own account. This is something that I see, now, just a aside, small aside, this is not in the document, but this is a problem we've seen across the platform multiple times. And so hopefully, uh, by reiterating this, they may actually go a little bit deeper into it and actually go for some transparency in combating this shill bidding. So, because shill bidding is one of the worst and most egregious problems you see in these uh, fast bidding live auction platforms and it does a lot in eroding the trust and eroding the the just overall good feeling of your buyers on your platform so it's incredibly important as a platform to make sure there is no show bidding happening because that is that among other things could really ruin something um, so pull games going back to the document pull games a pull game is where a buyer picks a number within a range that equals the total number of items in a stack and the seller pulls the corresponding numbered item from that stack. In pull games, sellers must show the entire set of items being pulled from on screen and sim similar to mystery boxes, packs, see below, sellers must list the following details about the stack they are pulling from in the product's name or description. Floor price, minimum lowest value item in the stack. Ceiling price, maximum highest value item in the stack. Average price, average price across the stack. And the total number of items in the stack. Now, this is all pretty standard. This is something that I, I don't believe has changed since even I left the platform. Pack wars, spot wars, box wars. Um, a pack war, spot war, or box war is a game where multiple people buy a pack, box, spot, and use the cards from these purchases to compete against each other in a winner-takes-all scenario. Um, wars of any type are prohibited on whatnot. So this is also something that's already been in place. Mystery boxes, packs. This is something that you see a lot of in the Pokemon um, category. So there may, uh, uh, may be some changes here. All mystery boxes slash packs must be opened and shown during the live stream. That's not new. That's always been in the terms of service. All mystery boxes slash packs must be kept on screen during the show. Interesting that it's highlighted in bold. These were already um, in the terms of service before, but it seems that they're sort of emphasizing it a little bit more. Hmm. 
Very interesting. If you are selling in a category outside of sports or TCG and have early payout, you are not required to have all mystery boxes on screen during the live stream. If you are found abusing this, early payout will be disabled and uh, you may be banned from the whatnot platform. Okay. So uh, we'll go, that, that doesn't really go into the TCG much, so it doesn't matter. But I could see sort of why. It's just big, probably a space issue for like sneakers and bigger things. It's kind of hard to keep everything on screen. Cards shouldn't be a problem. However, you must have a proxy system on screen that denotes which mystery item a buyer has won, and the designated box pack must be shown and open on screen. Okay, so uh, during the live stream. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that, that's fair. Uh, again, the above does not apply to any sports or TCG breaks in mystery packs. Keep all packs visible on camera at all time, regardless of early payout status. So that's important to note for the TCG status, uh, or TCG um, category, is that it you always have to have it on screen. So that's something that should be noted. Across all, pla all, all categories, if you are found abusing mystery boxes to manipulate bids, you will be banned. Be truthful about pricing. Do not mislead buyers about the value of a box by mentioning the highest potential value of a mystery box. As stated in the community guidelines, if you cite the value of an item, be prepared to back it up with real data on comparable market prices. Never inflate the market value of an item, including mystery boxes and other comp uh, compilations. Market estimates of mystery boxes slash packs must be available upon request. Misstated values may lead to order cancellations, buyer refunds, or platform banning. So once again, this is all not new. This is very. Uh, this seems to be the same as what was before, but definitely good to go over all this. List product category along with four elements of market price and product name and description using the mystery pack slider feature. Unless your mystery pack or mystery item is a professionally prepackaged product, e.g., Hit Parade, Leaf, Target. You must list in the product's name description the following four elements of the market price of the product. Floor price, ceiling, average price, and the number of items that the, these statistics span. So simply, uh, similar to the poll games that they had said above. Please see the example below. Mystery pack, floor 100, ceiling 400, average 250 across 20 packs. Auction, example of acceptable mystery pack description. So that's... That's just what it should look like if everything is honest and it, it, all the, the values are there. It should look something like that. So, build your own box. For build your own box, all boxes are built once the purchase is complete or as buyers bid for the box pack. Buyers should receive items with a combined fair market value that is in line with the, bidding, the winning bid. Violation of this policy may result in removal of your eligibility to run such sales or banning of your account from whatnot. Now, if you have any questions, please click here, blah, 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 and then that's the end of the article. So, um, really interesting. I, I, so, thoughts, thoughts on this. Um, I, I do think, I, I think it's a good thing. Overall, um, no, it's, it's kind of full screen this. I think for the health of whatnot as a platform, mm, probably for the best that they've made this change um i do think there are still some things that of course can be improved upon it's always something that as a platform you'll be doing is improving upon certain things and you know keeping other things the same but i really honestly am impressed and i was very surprised with what happened in their response and um i don't want to say it was a very quick response but it was um an unexpected response, and in my opinion, probably for the best of their platform. And it has made me reconsider potentially coming back to the platform. So, at this point, I'm still weighing options, but I'm open to maybe coming back to WhatNot and giving it a chance once it's sort of sorted itself out a little bit. I do have 12,000 followers on the platform that I'd walked away with, uh, from... Not for any particular reason, but because I didn't want my reputation to be tarnished by what was happening on the platform that I had problems with. A lot of what I had problems with seems to be sort of being cleaned up here. And so we'll see how good of a job they do with that. And I might, might end up actually coming back and trying to um, see what it's like again. Because I really miss my uh, community. You know, I, I made a lot of friends on whatnot. I saw a lot of people that when I stopped streaming, I just kind of stopped interacting with. Not because I didn't want to, but just because I didn't see them anymore through my stream. And it would be nice to connect with those people again. And um, if I feel like 
the platform is a safe place for buyers that maybe um, is getting safer and is doing the things that they should be doing to look out for their business in the long term and their potential customers, then I can very much so see myself supporting the platform again and, and um, feeling good about paying a percentage of my profits to the company to facilitate those sales. So um, whatnot, if you're listening, if you're watching this, well done. Golf clap. I'm impressed. I'm happy. Um, I think that you should always be striving to do better. So continue moving forward and looking out for your buyers, making your platform a safer, better, more streamlined, and and just a more wholesome place for the community to spend their money. And I think you're going to find fantastic and continued success in this space. If it keeps going down the way that it was and it goes back the other direction and nothing changes like... Well, we may see on some of the other streaming platforms if they don't also clean up their acts. Um, then maybe something else is coming. And um, I do think that the businesses that are doing best by their customers and conducting the best business practices are most likely going to be the ones that come out of this at the end of the day. So that being said, I appreciate everyone for coming in here and uh, listening to me rant. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I enjoyed making it. Like, comment, subscribe uh, down below. Come find me at Collecticon next week. We'll be in down in Long Beach. So come find us. We have a table. Um, and we'd love to see you there. And thanks again. We'll see you on the next one.